Hey y'all, it's Savannah and this is Savannah Says. Today I'm going to be talking about The Atlas Six by Livy Blake, which is a book that's been making the rounds on the internet. It was self-published a year or two ago, I think, and people read it then, people loved it then, and now it's been like officially published. So I think it came out in like October or something. And so people have been reading it, people have been loving it. I just read it. I finished a day or two ago, I think. It's a dark academia. I just want to talk about it. Like, I don't really get it, but people seem to like it. I will say, I, I personally feel like there's virtually no way to talk about this book without spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I'm going to like put a little thing here that lets you know that I'm starting the spoilers. So if you don't want to know that, you can click off, whatever, and hopefully by that time you have gotten what you need to get from what I'm about to say. The Atlas Six is a book about six people who are brought together by this man named Atlas Blake. And he is the caretaker of the Alexandrian Library, which if you don't know is like the library that burned down in like whatever century that was. He is the caretaker of the Alexandrian Library. Every 10 years they recruit six people to become like inducted into the secret society and the people in the society have like unlimited access to basically anything they want to know. Which is good for these people because these six people and every other person who's inducted into this society are medians. In this world, median means magician. And so these six people are magicians in a world where people are human, right? Being a median is rare, but it's rare like being left-handed is rare. Like you can be left-handed, but there's still a lot of left-handed people because of the population of the world. These people are medians and they all have a different specialty of magic. and. The only way they can be inducted is that they have to be of different specialties, right? Okay, being inducted. So Atlas goes around to these six people and he basically says like, you can come to my meeting, hear what I'm about, and then you can choose to accept. If they accept, they have to stay at this like castle thing at the library, study and research for two years. But at the end of their first year, one person is going to be eliminated. Essentially, there are six of them, but only five are going to be actually inducted. In this first year, they have to work together to pass whatever tests might come up in order to make the cut. And I think that's pretty much all that I can say without giving away like too much of the plot. So at this point, I'm going to just be talking about the book in whatever form that may be. There are six characters. Well, there are six characters, six primary characters. People who are medians go to like college to study their specialty at special magic schools right when the book opens you're with nico and libby who are the two primary characters i would say and they are both physicists they can like alter basically the molecular structure of anything that is their magic but they are like frenemies because they're like at the top of their class at this magic school and because they're frenemies they like clash right they're also the best of the best in their school which is why they are recruited. So they both accept the invitation. Libby, she has this boyfriend named Ezra who's for all intents and purposes, human. He's pretty normal. Apparently he's like a drag, like he's boring. Nico doesn't like him. Why Nico has an opinion on her boyfriend, we don't know. You assume it's because they're really friends even though they compete with each other. And she has to leave for two years, but you can't tell anyone where you're going when you leave. You just have to leave and hope that the people around them Accept that, Nico and Libby. Then you meet Reyna, who is a naturalist. Basically being a naturalist just means like you can control nature. Her thing is plants. You can hear plants talking to her. She can hear like the grass, she can hear the trees. They feed off her energy and she feeds off theirs. It's pretty much as deep as that power is explained. Then you have Parisa. Parisa is pretty and she's a telepath. She's a pretty telepath. She can hear other people's thoughts and read their minds and like, extract memories like it's sort of giving inception but not really inception she can go into their minds plan thoughts take thoughts and the way that she does this is that she uses her beauty to entice people when she explains this she basically says having sex is the closest way to get people to like trust you because you can read their mind while you're having sex and it doesn't require like that much effort because they're thinking about something else they're not thinking of keeping you out right Parisa is a telepath. Tristan, who is an illusionist, which means that he can 
create illusions. He's special in that he can see through all illusions. Normally, illusionists, from what I understand, can only make the illusions. They can't see through them. Tristan can see through them. All right, Callum, who was an empath, that is all you know about Callum. We have Atlas Blake, don't know anything about him except he's the caretaker. And then you have Dalton, who is like the assistant to the caretaker, who was in the previous induction class. And you find out that he's an animator, which basically means he can bring things to life. He can bring dead people back to life. He chooses not to. He can also create lifelike animations of things and make you see something that is not actually there. So I guess it's like a type of illusion, but he can create these things, right? That's sort of important, but these are the main people that you have. The first issue that I have with this book is that like, none of the characters have personalities except Nico and Libby. I think that's because this book was supposed to be two POVs, but it ended up being six. Because you spend more time with Libby and Nico and you literally know their history and you know their background and you like literally are with them in their regular life before you get to like the school. They have the most personality. Everyone else is like a caricature of something. Reese is like the bitchy one who doesn't let anyone in. She's aloof, but she's beautiful. So people like her. Callum is literally just an asshole. I'm not really sure what his personality was supposed to be. He's very unlikable. No one likes him. Not even the people in the book like him. Kristen, who's just insecure because his whole life he's been told that he's worthless, blah, blah, blah. And then Reyna is just sort of like the shy, intimidating girl because no one really knows what she's about, but she also doesn't f share anything about herself. She literally just like exists. Uh, so no one has a personality in this book and that makes them all unlikable. Like being from every POV was kind of just like, why am I being forced to read this? Because none of them are discernible enough to like even give a fuck who you're reading about right like they're all pretty much the same they all think the same they're all like self-absorbed they think they're better than the other people except like the insecure one and that is all they think about and then they think about their magic but they think about their magic in the scientific physics way which means that it's just a bunch of like abstract ideas and thoughts that don't really mean anything because magic's not real the version of the book that i read was 600 pages and i'm not really sure why it was that long because according to goodreads this book is 375 pages but then the one i got from the library was literally double that and so that made it even worse like am i supposed to be caring about any of these people because i didn't i didn't care and that's the first issue i had was that like i cannot find one person who i would want to eliminate in order to get the next five through the only person who i would say for sure i would keep would be libby because she's got a personality and maybe Reyna because plants. The second gripe, which is like the major one, is the plot and how there isn't one. There's, there's really no plot to this book. I think the main plot is that they are trying to be inducted into the society and you learn this in the first like 20 pages, right? So then for the rest of the 350 or 600, if you're reading the book that I read, is literally just them researching. They're literally just talking in circles about their fucking powers, but not actually like explaining anything or doing anything. It's just a lot of like, I thought about this, so I researched it and I came to this conclusion, but you tell me, will this work? Then the person they're talking to, I don't know, will it work? I don't know, will it work? It's, it's like that. It's like they ask a question, they get a question in return, but there's no like answer. It's just questions and questions and questions. And it's like, what is the plot? I thought the plot was six people getting inducted to the secret society and they were going to be trained in their powers and for whatever reason I convinced myself this was a heist novel not really sure where I came <laughs> where I got that from but I thought it was a heist novel so I was expecting like them to do something with these powers and they never did in the beginning of the book they there's like this night where it's basically like a test and this happens every 10 years, apparently. There's like a test and they have to work together because the whole point of this whole thing is that they have to work together to like protect the knowledge in the library, right? So if they don't know how to work together, they'll never be able to do that. So this test is them using their powers and like figuring out who's strong here, who's strong there and like work, again, working together, right? Which I liked that part. It was 
it was a nice like section to read because they're actually fighting there's like guns they're like actually using their fucking powers and you realize that like Tristan's kind of cool and that's when I started liking Tristan because I'm like okay Tristan can see through illusions he's like helping Libby out Libby and Nico are pretty much again the only people doing anything substantial because they're physicists and they can like change the world around them so I again I'm thinking this book was meant to be two POVs and it somehow got split into however many it ended up being but Libby and Nico are the most useful and then Tristan is probably the next useful and then I would say Reyna is probably third useful because apparently her power manifests itself as like a battery she's connected to other people she like heightens their abilities and I was like great we're learning something new I'm here for it like this is again in like the first hundred pages of the book so you're like okay great there's action there's a bunch of characters they all have different powers blah 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 we're gonna get into it but then like it literally stops when I tell you literally nothing happens nothing happens in this book they just read and you read about them reading and then um Nico has this friend who lives with him in his apartment who's a magical creature why that's relevant I'm not sure also not really sure how that fits in because from what I have understood about the setting of the story they live in America earth but it starts off in America and for all intents and purposes people are human right there's no like supernatural being there's no whatever whatever there's no like weird nothing so Nico has this friend who's a half mermaid half satyr but he's humanoid and he can travel he can like astral project and travel through like dream plane so like he can see things in other realms of alternate reality I guess and again why that is important I do not know but they talk about it a lot so I'm assuming that it's got something to do with something but this creature's name is Gideon and Nico has spent a lot of time and energy trying to like protect Gideon from his mother Gideon's mother who is a mermaid who is like a criminal and her work her line of work basically is like extracting things from people's minds so again somebody liked Inception they're extracting things from people's minds and Gideon doesn't want to do that don't know why he doesn't want to do that I guess it's like invasive or whatever but Nico has spent so much energy like physical energy because his power manifests itself in like making him physically exhausted to protect Gideon and it's implied that they're like in love with each other but they're also best friends which is like fine I guess but also like how is that at all relevant to anything that's going on it's not which um leads me to I guess will be plot b-2 which is Parisa and Dalton having like a relationship which is like forbidden romance because they're both explicitly told not to be with each other but really could not tell you why they're attracted to each other because everyone likes Parisa because she's pretty right so Dalton I guess Parisa can tell he has a secret to share that he's trying to hide or whatever and so she gets close to him like they start making out I think they have sex or something it's not like written out in the book but they definitely like hook up it's implied I don't remember if it was said honestly at this point I don't remember anything because nothing happened and the truth is that this elimination that they have to go through is basically a murder they have to kill someone one of the people in their group has to be killed or die they have to die they have to be removed from living in order to get the next five through right but the catch is that it has to be a sacrifice so whether that means the person dying like just knows that like it's me I'll sacrifice myself or if the person doing the killing likes the person being killed so that's a sacrifice like damn you're my friend but I gotta kill you because I'm trying to like get to the next level of this apprenticeship I guess so it spreads through the group that like somebody has to die and obviously they all fucking hate Callum he's just like I said he's literally just an asshole that's his only personality is to like 
emotionally manipulates people and makes them do things that they wouldn't normally do based on emotions right and if that means harming yourself he does that and he does that a couple of times in this book when they're having their little action scene at the beginning they're like shooting guns he convinces one of the intruders to like turn the gun on themselves and Parisa was with him when that happened so she's like understandably disturbed he doesn't seem to have any feelings one way or the other about it he's kind of like whatever so Parisa is like okay let's have a test and see who's better again no plot so they're having a test and it's she's like in his mind and he's in her mind whatever but like the scene morphs and they end up like on the roof and like Callum convinces Parisa to jump off the roof but then you're actually not in you're actually not on the roof right Parisa can create <laughs> astral planes in people's minds I don't know they were in Nico's mind watching this scene play out but no one knew that they were in his mind everyone thought they were in reality and that Callum actually made Parisa do this so when it's revealed that like that's not what happened but he still was willing to do that in reality that's the moment where they're like okay he's got to go we're not really feeling him whatever whatever you have Tristan who is friends with Callum they're like in an alliance kind of so the idea is that okay you're the only person here who's sort of friends with him so you have to kill him right you got to get rid of him because that's the sacrifice like you killing him is a sacrifice so that's the plan they go with which is I already forgot what part of the plot this is. This is the B plot. This is B point two plot. Second half of the plot. B plot. Which ties into the A plot, but it's still kind of the B plot. I'm losing the plot at this point. The C plot, which doesn't happen until like the last 10% of the fucking story. And the C plot is that Ezra, the limp noodle boyfriend from the beginning of the book, is actually a time traveler that's his power that he can travel time I guess I honestly don't even know he can travel time and so when that's revealed it's ex exposed to the reader that like him and Atlas are like this they're like fucking friends because they were going to be inducted at the same time they were both like chosen to be inducted into the society 20 years ago because at this point it happens every 10 years and Dalton was 10 years ago and Atlas was before Dalton so that's 20 years ago they were chosen to be the group to research or whatever but nobody liked Ezra because he was weird and the reason why he's so weird is because he knows that he can travel time and that he doesn't age and so he doesn't share that with people which I guess is understandable but like he travels through the astral planes and he doesn't age and all of this and all of this so him and Atlas form this plot which doesn't even really make sense they form this plot because I guess Ezra's been to the future and he sees that like this specific group of people are going to change the world it's revealed that he can jump through time and so that comes into like the primary plot because now we have Tristan trying to kill Callum but Libby realizes that this is a mistake because she's like we picked Tristan to do this and he literally could never kill him like we fucked up somebody has to be with Tristan while he's doing this because Callum's gonna kill Tristan like not the other way around right but before Libby can like tell anyone this she's snatched through like the astral plane by Ezra because apparently Atlas is losing the plot and he was supposed to be recruiting people to change the world but now he's changed his mind and Ezra's pissed and Ezra has like a society that's anti the Alexander society and that society is going to change the world but he needs Libby to do it I think basically what I'm trying to say is this book has no plot and it has so little plot that like I'm clearly fucking confused trying to explain it it literally does not make sense it's just they get picked they have a fight scene 
this much of the book they do nothing but research and then this much of the book at the end is when like they introduce like this revenge plot like it doesn't make sense and that was my primary issue with this book is that like the there is no plot and you know maybe maybe I'm confused because maybe in my mind I like I said I convinced myself this was a heist novel where did I get that from I literally made that up and maybe I just haven't read that much dark academia and you know now that I'm thinking about it I don't really read dark academia I watch it on tv like I watch shows with that like energy but this entire book was a giant vibe a 600 page vibe and if that's what dark academia is like I can accept that but starting this without knowing that that's what it was kind of pissed me off because I was just reading like where is the plot and there wasn't one the writing in this was pretentious and I'm again realizing that maybe that's like a dark academia thing where like everybody's pretentious and everybody thinks they're smarter than you and everybody wants you to know that you're stupid and again this is literally just inception but in inception they didn't make you feel like an idiot and th the characters in this book make you feel stupid because they're making each other feel stupid and they're all talking about nothing so it's really like what is the writing is literally too pretentious and like abstract for any of this to have a meaning to me so I wasn't really feeling it and like apart from that like I was also told or saw online that this was like a queer book and like there was like queer romance there's literally no romance if you're reading this thinking there's a romance there is no romance the the only thing romantic about this book is that everybody they hate each other so much that like at any moment the hate could turn to sex and that's really the only romance and it's all of them they all have the same energy with one another so you're not even like rooting for anyone to like get together which is fine just don't say it's got a romance in it because I'm sitting here looking for the romance it doesn't exist I gave it three stars which after all of that you're like really bitch like yeah I gave it three stars because at least in the last like 30 pages I was like oh action finally you know and at the very least the next book I know that it's gonna be pretentious I know there probably won't be a plot but at least whatever plot happens in the next book will be more of a plot than this one because we actually have a villain now two villains because I guess Ezra is technically a villain Atlas is definitely a villain if you're asking Ezra and then vice versa so like really you have two villains two potential ways the sword could go Libby's dead but she's not really dead she's like in the astral plane so everyone's like looking for Libby there's just so many things that we could have in book two that I'm hoping like happens and that is why I gave it three stars because honestly the premise itself is not bad right it's just like once you get beyond the premise I wasn't really feeling it but at that point I committed to reading it and like I almost stopped reading it but I committed and I finished um I'm hoping that the next one's gonna be good I guess it's coming out this fall uh, so if you liked this book I'm happy for you um, I want you to tell me about it. I want you to share your thoughts, your opinions, what you didn't like, what you did like. I know we don't all like the same thing, so I'm willing to hear you out. I'm, I love reading a good review or a negative review. I love one star reviews. They're very truthful sometimes. Um, so yeah, let me know how you think. Uh, that was my experience reading the Atlas 6 and hopefully yours is better. So until the next time, bye.